Live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists, this is Tracking the Tropics. Hurricane Hannah, yes, you heard that correctly. The first hurricane of the 2020 season, a Category 1 storm. Advisories have the storm with maximum sustained winds at about oh, 75 miles per hour and landfall is expected today. Good afternoon from your hurricane headquarters in Tampa, Florida. I'm Daisy Ruth and I'm joined by Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Amanda Hawley and our featured meteorologist Jim Danner from our friends at KVEO in Texas. Jim, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Thanks for having me. So Jim, we appreciate you, but before we get to the impacts that you folks are seeing in Texas, in your area, we are going to go to Amanda Holly for the very latest, not just on Hurricane Hannah, but Tropical Storm Gonzalo as well. And goodness, Amanda, I logged in this morning and I see we have Invest 92L as well. That's right. The tropics are heating up. It's that time of the year as we round out July, heading into August. That's when we start to see this activity ramping up August and September. Some of our busiest months out there, though. So, you know, we're, we're mainly on here to update you about Hurricane Hannah, but because we have a couple other storms out there, we want to get to those as well. Quick update on Tropical Storm Gonzalo, the 11 a.m. advisory. Maximum sustained winds still at 40 miles per hour, but this storm is very ragged. It's about to make its way over the southern windward island. Islands. You can see how far south this storm is as well. It's really not expected to survive over the next 48 hours. The forecast track has it moving into the southern Caribbean here and dissipating by in less than 24 hours here by tomorrow morning. So good news for us. That is not going to be a worry. Invest 92L though, something we're definitely going to have to watch here over the next two weeks as it makes its trek across the Atlantic. This is a tropical wave. It came off the coast of Africa a couple days ago. It's now making that westward track through the southern Atlantic. It has a 60% chance of developing as it makes its way uh, toward the Caribbean. We're going to watch this one right now. Nothing to worry about, but certainly keep it tuned to tracking the tropics for any details and updates on that one. Here's Hurricane Hannah. Yes, the first hurricane of the 2020 Atlantic season because we actually have already had a hurricane in the Pacific. So first hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico as well. Maximum sustained winds as of the 11 a.m. advisory here, 80 miles per hour. So it has strengthened a little bit since we did get that first hurricane update at 8 a.m. this morning. And it is now making its way toward the coast of Texas, the southern coast, just south of Corpus Christi. You can see it's gotten a lot better organized over the past 24 hours. It looks like a tropical storm here. We're talking about symmetry. There is storms wrapped around the entire storm and rain is actually already starting to fall in South Texas along that coast there. It is expected to make landfall later on today in just a few short hours here. It's only moving west at about seven miles per hour. It has slowed down just a little bit, but this storm going according to plan. Yes, it did strengthen a little bit, but the impacts are basically the same. We're talking about the wind impacts, of course, and it's going to be a rainmaker because the storm is going to weaken very quickly after it makes its way on land, as tropical systems usually do, but it's going to bring a lot of moisture with it. So we're talking about flooding potential, flash flooding potential in South Texas. This is the current wind field. Uh, we're talking about tropical storm force winds. That's that outer green shaded area here, extending out about 90 miles from the center of the storm, already impacting the coastal areas near Corpus. Corpus Christi, and then the hurricane force winds extend out about 25 miles from the center there. So we're already talking about seeing impacts from Hannah, again, the first hurricane of the 2020 Atlantic season, about to make landfall later on today. And here joining us now is Jim Brenner from KVEO. He is actually a meteorologist in South Texas. And I'm going to toss it back to Daisy so that I can join you guys over in the hurricane headquarters center, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, Jim is going to give us a little bit more details on what they're going to experience there in South Texas. Daisy? Yes, Jim. Hey, you just heard uh, Banda's forecast for a couple different systems churning out there in the ocean. So we just really want to get your perspective from Texas. What are you folks experiencing there right now? Are you seeing anything, any impacts right now? And what do you expect to see moving forward? 
Right now, it's pretty quiet out there. We're still kind of the calm ahead of the storm, I guess you could say. We have seen some light uh, bands from the outer bands of Hanna move across uh, the eastern counties of Willacy and Cameron and also out across the Laguna Madre into the coastal waters. But all in all, right now, pretty quiet out there. But that will be changing as we are showing there on the satellite radar there as Hanna churns westward. Still looking at that landfall you know, that mid-afternoon or so. And that's when I think we'll start to see our impacts really start to go up. So for us, our rain is really going to be ramping up, I think, by mid to late afternoon, and then especially overnight tonight and into the day on Sunday. And the problem here in the Rio Grande Valley is we uh, a little too much of a good thing. We have problems real quick. So four to six inches of rain around here can bring flash flooding. And once you get into that six to 10, 15 inch range or, rain or so, that's when we start seeing catastrophic flooding around here. We saw that a couple of years ago with the tropical wave in June. We saw that again last year in June. Not, it wasn't a tropical related situation, but unfortunately we've been seeing way too much of that over the last couple of years. And it looks like we're on, under the gun to see that again, uh, starting this afternoon and overnight tonight. So, Jim, you, you say about things that get very kind of disastrous very quickly, um, and, and you said late afternoon. Do you have a, a time frame that you think that this might make landfall? Well, I, from the, what I'm seeing here and just looking at computer models, that's, so I'm still looking at about that, you know, maybe three, four o'clock time frame. Now, that's north of here. So here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, looking at still that landfall there around Baffin Bay, which was just southeast of Kingsville, south of Corpus Christi there. So the winds will be pretty much stronger away from here, you know, towards the north and east of the storm. Down here, we're just looking for the heavy rain event. So I think the rain will start to pick up this afternoon, but I think we'll start seeing the heaviest bands as we go through this uh, late this afternoon and this evening. And it, again, it doesn't take a lot to start getting flooding around here. And it looks like the slow progress of the system to the west southwest will take it into our upper uh, counties, which is Star County, uh, late tonight, early tomorrow morning. That keeps the entire valley in that heavy rain potential going at least until it looks like early to mid afternoon on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, too much of a good thing around here is a bad thing. All right, folks, we are joined back here by Tracking the Tropics Meteorologist in your hurricane headquarters in Tampa, Florida, Amanda Holly. So, Amanda, we talked a little bit about these other storms that are out there right now. What effects are we going to be seeing in the Tampa Bay area? And, folks, if you have some questions, use hashtag Hey Daisy, hashtag Hey Amanda, or hashtag Hey Jim, whether you are here in Florida or over in Texas, our friends in Texas. So just let us know if you have a question. But I know a question that we get often is, hey, what, what are we going to be seeing in the Tampa Bay area? Of course, we are based here in Tampa, Florida. So, Amanda, anything? What's the forecast moving forward? It's a great question. Yeah, a lot of folks joining us from the Tampa Bay area. And you can see where the map is focused on at this point. The map is focused in Texas for a reason, and that's because they're seeing the impacts from Hurricane Hannah. We are not seeing the impacts here in Florida. Uh, you know, our rain chances are going to go up on Sunday and Monday thanks to some deeper tropical moisture moving in, but it's not a tropical cyclone that's moving in. So again, higher rain chances for Sunday and Monday not related to Hannah. Uh, Gonzalo, again, that storm is expected to dissipate, not affecting Florida. The one that we're going to watch here in Florida is Invest 92L, and it's way too soon to talk about where that will go if it survives what it will become it's just something we're watching here on tracking the tropics hannah though specifically affecting the coastline the eastern coastline of texas and also in south texas where jim is at and that's why we have him joined with us today perfect perfect example to um you know help us understand what they are going to experience and like he's been talking about rain is going to be the biggest thing if you look at that legend there i know it's kind of hard to see but those reds that um that what? you're that you're seeing on that screen there that's between six mm -hmm. and twelve inches inches of rain. The National Hurricane Center isolated says isolated amounts up to 18 inches and that's a lot of rain no matter where you're talking about. And Jim obviously is very experienced in this area of South Texas and he's saying that it could become, you know, very bad very quickly. So, you know, this is just a weak hurricane at this point. But we're talking about the next couple of months going into hurricane season. We're going to talk more and more about hurricanes, stronger hurricanes at that as well. So just a good reminder to be prepared as we go into the rest of hurricane season. Exactly, Amanda. I talk about this often. I think probably every track in the traffic stream that I do hear about preparing for the worst of hurricane season. So, Jim, I want to ask you right now for your folks there in, in Texas, what would you recommend them doing right now? Well, what I've been mentioning uh, as we've been on air this morning is you still have a few hours to get all the necessary essentials that you need to prepare for. Down here, we're not worried about the wind, it's the rain. And people here 
unfortunately have it fresh in their memory from June of last year, June of two years ago, of what can happen down here in a very short period of time. So right now, it's the calm before the storm, but if you wait till mid to late afternoon, unfortunately for some areas, it may be too late. And something else I was gonna bring up too, this is something we talk about, the reason why we prepare people starting in May or even sometimes sooner than that for hurricane season, what was it, Wednesday? We were just looking at potential maybe for tropical depression and here we are just a few days later, these things can come up and happen in a hurry. And a couple of years ago, it wasn't a tropical storm, it was a tropical wave that gave us anywhere from 10 to 20 inches of rainfall around here. So. Slow moving tropical systems in South Texas can be a big problem. Absolutely. So I want to get your final perspectives, Amanda and Jim. Do you have any final thoughts on Hurricane Hannah, the first hurricane in the Atlantic, the 2020 Atlantic season? Amanda, I'm glad that you mentioned that because oftentimes I forget about the Pacific since, <laughs> since we're over here on the on the other side of things. So folks, final thoughts about this storm, hurricane season moving forward. Any advice that you would give folks? Well, it's just, this one's going to be a rainmaker, and as Jim just said, that you know you guys are very familiar with rainmakers there in Texas. This is no different. Lots of tropical moisture headed in. You can see the satellite and radar picture that you know there's hasn't been too many bands that have run through South Texas just yet. But we've been talking about moisture been kind of being pushed up along the northern Gulf Coast states for a couple days now as Hannah has gotten a little bit better organized. We're talking about the potential for a few tornadoes, not necessarily in South Texas there, but where the center comes ashore and farther north. Uh, no tornado watches in effect just yet. Again, rainfall potential with this one. A little bit of a storm surge as well. This storm isn't particularly strong, but we are still talking about winds moving that water, moving the Gulf of Mexico water onshore. So at high tides, expect those water levels to be a little bit higher uh, over the next couple of hours, 12 hours or so until the center kind of moves ashore and the storm starts to weaken. But again, this is this is the beginning, guys. We're going to be talking about mm -hmm. hurricanes over the next couple of months, and uh, this is just the first of them. Mr. Jim Daner, final thoughts here on Hurricane Hannah and hurricane season moving forward. Well, here we are just in July, and I want to say that this is, I believe this is the first tropical storm or hurricane, either one, that's uh, uh, that has impacted our area since Dolly back in 2008. So, uh, again, for us, this is going to be something we're going to be dealing with for weeks afterwards. Um, when you get the catastrophic flooding around here, um, problems persist for weeks and even months as far as people trying to get their lives back together. So again, you got a few hours if you're down here in deep South Texas to get prepared for this thing. Hopefully you've already done that because we're under the gun. Jim, we are thinking about you and everybody at your station and of course all of your viewers there at KVEO. Folks, any, any final comments before we sign off here on Tracking the Tropics from your hurricane headquarters in Tampa, Florida? Well, we're, we'll keep an eye on those comments as you continue to comment in. I believe our um, sister station is going to do another Tracking the Tropics for yes. us tomorrow. And, of course, we will continue to update you guys and have Tracking the Tropics coming every day if we need them. Uh, but yes. right now it looks like after this storm moves ashore, kind of dissipates, we'll be a little bit in a, in a lull, and then we'll be watching Invest 92L as it makes its way a little closer to home. But, you know, Tracking the Tropics will give you all the details. We're just here to inform you. We just want to let you know what's going on, give you some impacts that are coming from a tropical uh, cyclone that's about to make landfall in Texas. That's why we're coming to you on this Saturday. Otherwise, we hope you guys have a, a great Saturday if you're watching from around the country and keep it tuned. We'll, we'll have more details coming up. Yep. Thank you again to Mr. Jim Danner from KVEO Meteorologist. We appreciate you being on the program Absolutely. here and giving you some in, giving you some insight from, from our friends in Texas. Of course, we are here in Florida, but we, we appreciate you so much, Jim, and we hope you stay safe. Now be safe out there, everyone. All right. Folks, thank you so much for watching Tracking the Tropics here on your Saturday morning. Thank you for taking a little bit of time to join us here. I am Daisy Ruth for Tracking the Tropics, WFLA Now for Amanda Holly and Jim Danner. And folks, thank you once again for joining. And of course, as Amanda said, if any developments happen, we will be back here with you live on Tracking the Tropics. Have a good Saturday. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.